Here we go. All right, special cases of refraction. Just a quick heads up. Looking at a test next Wednesday. Not not like this coming, but like next next Wednesday. Okay. Do you? I also have one today. We have another thing. Wait, so. Here we go. A little review. As going from a low index refraction to a higher index refraction, i.e., air into water, tell your neighbor. What that's going to do. Okay. Here, here are your options. Does it bend away or towards the normal line? It's gonna bend towards the normal line. Okay. Here's your wheelchair going on a sidewalk and then going into grass, it slows down, bends towards the normal line. Okay. Now, going from a high index refraction to a low index refraction, obviously it does the opposite. And it is going to bend away from the normal line. Good with that. Okay. Actually, let's talk about Let's be specific here. So this is beta 1. That's your angle of incidence. Beta 2. This is your angle of refraction. There is also part of the ray that reflects and obeys the law of reflection. Okay, so some part of that ray goes into the water, some part of that ray bounces off the water. Remember the laser show in the fish tank? Okay, so you got, think, okay, so these angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, and this is the angle of refraction. Good with that? Okay, so here you also get. Here's your angle of incidence, your angle of refraction, and you also get a, an angle of reflection. So all that's review, theoretically. Okay. Now, let's look at some special cases or a special case. So here, let's say we increase our angle of incidence. What's going to be the result of that? Everybody have a some guess on what's gonna what that's gonna do, JP? Yep. So this guy is gonna be doing this, and this one also is gonna do something like that. 
in there. Now, at some point, we continue to increase this. At some point, are you okay that one of these rays is going to end up going parallel to the surface? Does that make sense just kind of geometry math-wise? Okay. When this happens, this angle of incidence, this is known as your critical angle. Okay. This is the angle that makes the refracted ray go parallel to the surface. Okay. And some of that, some of that is reflected in. Actually, let's, let's do that a little bit better. There, that looks better. More to scale. Good with that. Sort of see it. All right. What happens if we go beyond the critical angle? Sounds critical. If we exceed or go beyond the critical angle, none of the light is, escapes. All of that is reflected back in. Does that make does that, does that make sense? Why that does that? Like, and this is known as total internal reflection. Total internal reflection. Sort of see that. Total internal reflection. JP. Yep. And I'll, I'll give you a demo of that here in a second. So, let's do this. So here, this happens when the angle of incidence exceeds the critical angle. Causing all of the light to reflect back into the original medium. 
when the angle of incidence exceeds the critical angle, causing all of the light to reflect back into the original medium. Okay, what I care about is this right here and this right here, and also this reflected ray down here. Okay, so as Here's my reflected ray, refracted ray. And here, you can still see it on the wall coming out. And then right there, it disappears. Everybody see that? Gone. Right here, that is the critical angle. Good with that? Okay. Now, if I exceed the critical angle, it becomes totally internally reflected. Okay. Watch what happens to the brightness of the reflected ray, this guy right here, as it goes beyond the critical angle. Boom, boom, boom. See how it gets brighter? Okay, it's because here, some of that light is getting out and some of it is getting reflected back in. And as you get closer and closer to the critical, critical angle, less light is getting out and more is being reflected back in. And once it exceeds the critical angle, all of that light Bounces back in. Good with that? Do it for this side. Got a good line of sight here. So here. Here's my refracted ray. Getting closer, you can see it on the whiteboard. Ripples or the water going up and down, but at some point, total internal reflection. Okay, good with that. And the reflected ray gets brighter. Yep. Here come the lights. Okay, so what happens to the brightness of the reflected ray? 
it approaches critical angle or total internal reflection, it gets brighter, and the refractor air gets weaker. JP. So supposedly you should be calling it a skid? Yeah. Is that more for the surface tissue? Yes. No. Nope. Because nope. mm -hmm. this is a, a consequence that light is a wave. Bullets, just a particle. Okay. Huh? All right, so critical angle. To calculate the critical angle, we're going to use Snell's law. Okay. So this is a, this is a special case of refraction. So we can use Snell's law. My question is theta one and theta two. One of those things you are solving for. You're solving for the critical angle. The other one you know the value of. Okay, theta one, theta two. One is the critical angle. The second one, you know the value and what is that value. So think, I just want you to think about it without telling anybody. Without telling anybody. Without telling anybody. It's crazy how that worked. Yep. Theta 1, Theta 2. In Snell's Law. Okay. One of those where we want to... Uh, are solving for it, that's the critical angle. I want to calculate the critical angle. And then the other one, theta one, theta two, you have a value. What is that value? Have a conversation. Okay. Theta one, theta two. Which which one's your critical angle? Theta one is your critical angle. Okay. So here I've got I've got one point three three. Are we okay with that? You can see that. Sign of your critical angle. This is that angle here. Is equal to one index of refraction of air times sine of so what is the value of theta two? I will give you a big hint. What do we always measure the angle of the ray of light from? All yeah, that was poor grammar. <laughs> What do we always measure the ray of light from? The dotted normal line. So this is, theta 2 is 90 degrees. Pre-cal folks, what is, what is the sign of 90? Life just got a little easier. OK. Does it, does it make sense? My theta 2 is when this goes parallel, theta 2 is measured from the normal. Theta 2 is 90 degrees. Good with that? Okay. So... Critical angle okay, is 
the angle of incidence that causes the angle of refraction to be equal to 90 degrees. Causes the refracted ray to go uh, parallel to the surface. Good at that. Okay. So that, oh no, you got one more thing. Oops. All right. Two requirements for total internal reflection. Two requirements. Number one. Theta 1 has to be greater than your critical angle for total internal reflection. The second condition is this. When light is going from, looking at this original thing, from air into water, you told me it bent towards the normal line. Okay. What would happen if we took this ray of light, this incident ray, and like just barely skimmed the surface of the water? When this goes into the water, what's this going to do? Bend away or towards the normal line? Towards the normal line. That means it's going to do something like this. You're never going to get this to go parallel to that. This is only going to happen when you bend away from the normal line, not towards it. Does that make sense? Only you only get total internal reflection when light bends away from the normal line. Okay, so what that means is um, that theta, sorry, index of refraction one has to be greater than your second index of refraction. Those are the two conditions. For total internal reflection. Good with that. All right, so those are the factoids. Let's start applying them. Tell your neighbor.
Correct answer is? Correct answer is E. Every elephant enjoys. <laughs> oh, wow. Nothing, but okay for epilepsy. Okay, good at that. Okay, you only get a critical angle when going from a high index refraction to low index refraction. Okay, all right, beat me to the punch. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Do you want the answer? I 
answer now what what would happen if you mix those so starting with Snell's law which I will give you you need to apply this correctly so you're looking for critical angle uh, this is sine of 90 degrees. That goes, oops, sorry, no, no, no. That goes to one. So you get 0.875 sine of the critical angle, inverse sine. Find that to be 61 degrees. Okay. Now, let's say you forgot that. N1 has to be greater than N2. Let's say you flip those. What is that going to, what is your calculator going to tell you? Domain error, syntax error, something error. Okay. It's kind of a user friendly thing. It'll tell you, hey, you screwed that up. You can't have sign greater than one. Do that. Okay. These next things, just pictures of what I've showed you. Okay. Have a conversation. Um, 
What do you think? Okay, here, here's what I was getting at with this first statement. I don't know if, if you interpreted it this way. But light can come in in a whole lot of different angles. That's what this first statement is saying. Which of these two scenarios is going to have uh, total internal reflection happen more often? So this ray is going to get out. This ray goes parallel. This ray reflects back in this way, totally internally reflects. This ray totally internally reflects. This ray totally internally reflects. Here, this ray gets out. This one gets out. This one gets out. This one goes parallel. This one totally internally reflects. Which one does total internal reflection occur more readily, happen more often, more likely to occur? A. Okay. So a small critical angle allows or causes total internal reflection to happen more often. Okay. Any, any suggestions on how I could ask that better? Oh, your neighbor? Correct answer is D. Diamond to glass. Why? Because there's a bigger contrast in indices of refraction. Okay, the bigger the difference, the greater the bend is going to be. The greater the change in speed, the greater the, the deviation from the straight line path. Good with that. So, an application to this, one application is why diamonds look so good when they're cut well okay diamond has a really high index of refraction so light travels really slow so light is bent quite a bit a diamond is cut in such a way that they want all the light to come in but the only place it can get out is the top okay if you look at an engagement ring the diamond is going to be elevated and you can the back side is going to be exposed to light so light can get in but when it hits here it, it's cut in such a way that the angle uh the critical angle is exceeded and so it's reflected totally internally until it reaches the top and then light can get out so it makes the the diamond looked brilliant. If you ever look at the back side of a engagement ring, the diamond kind of looks dull. Okay, so does that make sense? Okay, uh, gem cutting, cutting the history of that is like it was just trial and error. 
And over time, they're like, oh, this makes it look better. Oh, this makes it look better. And then we like backtrack to figure out why it made it look better. And like a oh, critical angle and stuff. So good with that. Okay, another application is fiber optic uh, cable or fiber optics. So fiber optics uh, is a type of plastic that has a really high index of refraction. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this laser and I'm going to pass it through. I don't know if you can see this. Oh, you see it bouncing around in there. Okay. So, yes, it's super bright at the end. That's not what I'm really concerned about. But notice the laser bouncing around on the inside, experiencing total internal reflection. Kind of acts like a pipe for light. So this is just a really big, thick piece of fiber optic material. Uh, usually they're a lot skinnier. So this would be, got some Christmas tree decorations. Okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna shine a laser into there. Okay. What this is doing is these are in the fiber optic cable. I'm shining that laser under there. And what that's doing is acting like a pipe for light. And it's going until it reaches the end. It's bouncing around totally internally reflected until it reaches the end where it's cut. And then that doesn't exceed the critical angle, so it's able to get out. That's why it's super bright at the end. Okay. Now, usually what we do is we have a, like, stick this up, and whatever the color of the bulb is, that's the color of light that's passed through there. Pull that. See if that goes same better. Do that. Okay. So, a more application based of fiber optic cable is. Uh, internet. Okay, so you've heard of fiber or like traveling internet, the speed of light. Okay, this is fiber optic cable. So the two companies, here come the lights, the two companies that service uh, our area for internet or fiber optic cable is WinTech and MetroNet. Um, 
So WinTech was over by my house installing uh, fiber optic cable. So I went out, out and talked to the technician. You get a lot of free stuff when you tell people you're a teacher. Um, and he's like, oh, your physics? Oh, and he's like, he's geeking out with me. Um, so he gave me a section of the fiber optic cable. Um, he said one of these little strands was enough. One of those little dudes um, was enough to uh, carry 20 houses of data. Okay. Here's how this works. So uh, to talk to a computer, just binary, ones and zeros. Okay. Prior to fiber optic cable, it was alternating current going back and forth. Like one, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, just a pattern of alternating current. Okay. There's resistance there because you're passing current through wire. Fiber optic cable, you can pass that same information, not back and forth, but just on, off, on, off, on, off, on, 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 off, 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 on, on, okay? Kind of like Morse code. Okay. Um, and how much resistance is there for light? It's light. It is none. Okay. So it's super efficient, super fast. It goes like speed of light, um, but it's expensive to install. Okay, so there, there's an upfront cost, but once it's in, it's good to go. So I'll pass this around. This copper wire is, is for like in case it gets shocked, grounding purposes. Um, there's three uh, white strands two of those are just fiber or fiberglass used for strength the, the middle one is where you get the fiber optic cable and there's like i don't know five seven or so of those in there okay so um remember what we were talking about on friday the fish's point of view okay so now that we know something about total internal reflection, here's what goes on. So the girl with the goggles underneath the water is looking up and what she sees here looks like this. Okay, because light coming from the girl's head bends down and she thinks she sees it up here. Light from the sand at some point experiences total internal reflection. And so she just sees the mirror image of that. So try this next time you're in a swimming pool with goggles on, go under the water and look up and see what it looks like. Okay. Here's some photographs of under the water. So here we see the mirror, the, the surface of the water acts like a mirror. It's total internal reflected. The camera's down here in the water. Here you can see you're above, getting above water. Fish, the hand, those are all right. But here's, these are my favorite. Okay, this is a hotel swimming pool. Okay, check this out. The banister then jumps up to here. This is totally internally reflected. Okay, this is an Olympic swimming pool. These, these are just the lines being reflected off the surface of the water. Here's where you can see out. Get to that. Okay, and then here are some other pictures that we didn't get to on Friday. So, Frosty cut, a mug of root beer. You think it's like totally brimming full, but if you think about it, the, the glass is usually really thick. It's just an optical illusion because of refraction to think like, man, it's so full. Ah, really the gotcha. Suckers. Okay. Straight lines look not so straight. 
due to refraction, bending of light. Okay. If you notice on this picture and this picture, the camera is not going straight into the swimming pool. It's at an angle. Okay. So this guy's body is right here. So light's coming off the guy's body. It bends away from the normal line into your eyes. We think we see his body in a straight line path here. You with that? Last thing. That's just some other examples of refraction. Do that. That's the physics show today, kids. <laughs>